So I want to evaluate the integral from minus to positive infinity of 1 over x squared plus x plus 1 squared uh, using the residue theorem. So as usual, I will try to find the poles first. So set the denominator equal to 0. And I get that x is equal to minus a half plus or minus square root of 3 over 2 times i. So those are my poles. Um, and now I can factorize my denominator. Um, instead of simply writing x squared plus x plus 1, I can write the denominator as x minus minus a half plus square root of 3 over 2i squared times x minus minus a half minus square root of 3 over 2i squared. Okay. Now we have the choice uh, about the uh, the path we take because we have no exponential. Okay, we don't have something something like e to the i x or e to the minus omega i x. We don't have that, so we are free to choose our path. Okay, uh, because here we're not going to prove that the 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 part along the circular axis vanishes because of the exponential decay, but uh, because of another reason. Um, just we just need to be to remind ourselves that if we go clockwise, like that uh, which we would do if we go in the lower half plane, uh, we need to multiply the residues with minus two pi, okay, two pi i minus two pi i because um, so minus two pi i because we go in a clockwise direction. While if we go in the upper half plane, we're going counterclockwise. And so we would simply uh, multiply with 2 pi i, okay? Because this is counterclockwise, so this is positive, okay? In math. Okay, they just, uh, yeah, they decided in math that if it's clockwise, it's negative. If it's counterclockwise, it's positive, okay? Uh, yes, there is no true reason about why. They just decided. So, yeah, we just need to remind ourselves for it. So let's take the lower half plane, uh, just for fun. Um, so we will have this negative 2 pi i at the end. Um, yeah, so uh, as usual, we will prove that the part along the, uh, the, the half circle, the lower half circle, uh, disappears as r gets larger and larger. So that will be our goal. Uh, so we will set x equal to r e to the pi i t as usual. t is between 0 and negative 1. And, um, our dx is as usual pi i times r times e to the pi i t dt. And so we can rewrite everything in terms of t. So we have the integral from 0 to minus 1 um, of pi i, pi i r e to the pi i t dt. So that these are uh, dx rewritten in terms of t. And in the denominator, we have r squared times e to the 2 pi i t plus r times e to the pi i t plus 1, the whole squared, okay? So we replaced x with uh, r times e to the pi i t and dx with pi i r times e to the pi i t dt, okay? And so now this whole thing will go towards 0, so we'll vanish for r toward infinity because Roughly, we have r over r to the fourth, okay? We have an r here, here we have an r squared, but the whole thing in the denominator is squared because, uh, yeah, it's of, it's, yeah, it's of order two. Um, also, the poles will be of order two later, we'll see that. Uh, yeah, because everything is squared, so we have r over r to the fourth power. So we have one over r to the third power, and that will tend towards zero if r tends toward infinity, okay? Uh, yes, and that's how here, we, that's how we prove here, in this case, how the part along the lower half circle vanishes, because there is no exponent in the function, okay, we have no Fourier transform, we're not taking the real or imaginary part of e to the ix, because we have no cosine and sines, so we want, we cannot prove it, prove that this uh, second part vanishes using an exponential decay because we have no exponent at all. Uh, yes. Yes, so we use it, improve it using those radius simply that go toward infinity. Okay. 
So now we use the residue theorem again, so our contour integral, which is made of the part one and two. So the part one is the part along the real axis, again from minus to positive infinity, which is our original integral. Okay, because we go from minus infinity to positive infinity. So this is our original integral plus our second part that now vanishes, so uh, which is um, zero. So uh, we have that our integral plus zero is equal to minus two pi i times the sum of the residues. Okay, minus because uh, we go as said clockwise. Okay, we go uh, like this. Okay, here. Um, as said, it would be counterclockwise if we were in the upper half plane, but we choose the other way here. So now um, our residues, we have a pole of order 2, so uh, it's not order 1, so it's a bit harder, so we need to use the general formula. So here um, we replace every n in this uh, general formula with the 2, so 1 over 2 minus 1 factorial times the limit as x approaches our pole, which is inside our domain. Uh, so here in the lower half plane we only have minus a half minus square root of 3 over 2 i, which is inside our domain. Then we're taking the first derivative, okay, two, the 2 minus 1's derivative, so the first derivative. Um, so here we have our, our calculation, so we have our x minus our pole to the second power, because here n is equal to 2, times our function that we factorize. So we can cross out this part and this part, because this is a factorized and this is the same thing. And we're left with this part, okay, so x minus a half minus a half plus square root of 3 over 2i squared, okay? So now if we take the limit as x approaches this uh, minus a half minus square root of 3 over 2i um, and uh, uh, yeah, inside this, uh, this, this function here, if we take that, uh, once we have taken the derivative, of course, this is the derivative of uh, the thing here, uh, we get the following values, so uh, minus 2 over negative square root of 3i to the third power, so we can rewrite it as minus 2 over 3 times square root of 3i. So this is our the value of our, uh, this is our residue, sorry, and now we can make minus 2 pi i to get our integral, so if you multiply that by minus 2 pi i, we get 4 pi over 3 times square root of 3, okay. So a bit simpler as the last videos.